compound interest. Here's a compound interest formula. Right. How much money you've got is principal one minus rate of interest, the compounding period, and t. Okay, compounding period and time you're gonna put in there. Know this formula, it comes in really, really, really handy. Okay, this applies in many, many different places. Okay. Now, depending on which one of these things you have, what bit of information you have, and what you're trying to solve for, you can just use simple algebra, basic algebra. You need exponents, or you have to go into logs if you're looking for compounding period or time, right? But let's do lay down the problem a little bit um, initially. Okay, how are we doing for time? Not bad, not bad. So check this out. Let's assume you make $110 or $150. So this is you. You earn, earn, earn $150. Okay. That's what you're earning. I'm making the simple numbers, right? You have to pay tax at 33%. That means a third of your income goes towards taxation. So after tax, after tax, which equals one point, oops, no, 150 times, times 0 0.33. Yeah, let's make this tighter so it all fits. Tax at 33% which equals um, 150 times 0 0.33, which equals $100, right? Approximately. Okay, let me make sure it's into the right range without rounding, where we end up with rounding. If I just go to two decimal places. Yeah, 100, 100.5. We'll just say $100. So you get $100 left over, right? Elder God says, I do this math every week. You get $100 left over. Let's write this out. $100 left over. Or sorry, uh, this, this ends up costing you $50, right? So after tax, you got 150 minus 50, you get $100 left over, right? That's how much money you're making. Okay. Now, let's say you go out and spend your $100, right? Sales tax, I don't know where you guys are. In my part of the world, um, we got two different types of taxes here. We got provincial tax and federal tax. And together, they add up to 15% tax in general on things that you're buying some things don't have PST some things don't have GST but it's safe to say most of the things you're buying you're paying around 15% tax what's the tax rate in your location if you're buying goods what are you guys paying in general because I want to use a base number I know in Canada is fairly high but I don't know uh, I think some other places are pretty high as well I mean Scandinavian countries is very high I think it's higher than Canada. Canada is one of the highest places. So I don't want to go with the extreme. I want to go with what the consensus is. Do you guys pay like 10% tax when you buy stuff? 8%, 15% like we do? What do you guys end up paying? Let's see. Average tax. Would it be average tax? I don't think. No, I'm not going to look up average tax. That would be crazy. Average tax where? Where would the average tax be? Let's see. Oh, no replies. We're going to go with fifteen percent. 
Yours is 20%? Elder God? In the UK, you guys pay 20%? When you buy stuff? Damn, that's high. Apparently, sales tax in Bhutan is 50%. <laughs> Yikes. So 15% is on the low end of you guys. 6.5% local sales tax here. j -Paw. You must be in the States. You guys have state and federal uh, in the States as well, no? When you buy products. And in Alberta, they don't have any uh, provincial on certain things. They pay less than we do. So let's stick with 15%. Let's assume 15% tax. 15% tax paid pay 15% tax on purchases let's put it that way you pay 15% tax on purchases pay 15% tax on purchases okay. should we do a table let's do a table figure out because this hundred dollars is in circulation right this is how much productivity you put into the system you created $150 worth of $150 of energy into the system now if you have your own business or you got your corporation and you're working for and if they're profitable then they actually this is how much you put in but they end up getting more out of it because they're taking $150 let's say you spent you get paid fifty dollars an hour it took you three hours to make this thing right so you got paid 150 dollars but the company that sells this thing sells it for 200 dollars right so your 150 dollars the system turned into 200 dollars right for a corporation but you get taxed you got taxed fifty dollars you get to take home a hundred dollars right i'm moving to canada for that extra five percent and i can also <laughs> fight um and tyranny as well oh, so you're welcome to join us elder god right now you only have a hundred dollars let's make a table one hundred dollars you go out and spend a hundred dollars you get 15 percent taxed right that means you got $85 is left in the economy in the circulation because $15 of that government they came and took $15 of that money so not not only did you pay 50% of your income tax right so out of $150 that you earned the first purchase you make with that $100 you only got $85 of it, right? Real buying power because 15% went to the government, right? Now, someone else takes this money, $85, and they, when they do a next purchase, that's again 15% tax, right? So, 85 times 0.8 five really that means 72 72.25 five dollars is back in the economy minus 85 and 12 dollars and 75 cents went to the government more All right now take that Seventy-two dollars and twenty-five cents. The next person that buys something pays fifteen percent tax. So let's just multiply this by times. Oops, let me reset it. Uh, seventy-two point two five. Seventy-two point two five times point eight five, which is what is remained. Now there is. Sixty-one dollars and four messy, messy forty-one cents. Forty-one cents left. 
That means the government. 72.25. The government took another $10.84. $10.84. You continue this, right? At the end of the day, how many circulations is it going to take for this thing to reach zero? For the government to have taken all hundred dollars of your worth, what you generated, right? So out of the hundred and fifty dollars, the initial tax you pay is fifty dollars, you get a hundred dollars. You take your hundred dollars, you spend it in the economy, now there's only eighty-five dollars of economy money left in the economy because 15 percent of it went to the government that 85 85 dollars by the way if a company is making this or a person is making this as an income remember at the end of the year the government is going to take a chunk of this as income tax as well right this is the bare minimum that's happening right because every time there's changing of hands that gets put into the ledger and if a company or a person is making profit off that, the government comes and says, give me more money, right? So this is bare minimum, assuming nobody's making a profit. Just by spending your money in the system, every time you spend it, the government gets a piece of the pie, right? Until you add all these up. So after three, three iterations, one, two, three, three times, add these guys up. Here, let's add them up. Just doing some fun mental math just because what's happening is taxes are going to go up interest rates about to go up and people are about to pay a heavy price right so after three times of your original hundred dollars being used in the economy another 38 dollars of it 38.59 Right. of the hundred the government has taken okay. that's not 38 percent of the original hundred that you got back because the government took a third of it to begin with right wow 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 now we can use a compound interest formula to figure out how much money would be left what should we use let's see we're not going to use time and actually we're not even going to use the compound interest we could use simple interest formula i equals prt is that simple interest i is equal to prt simple interest principal rate time interest that you pay no we don't even need to use that we can use the compound i guess sure let's see <laughs> and the n we're just going to leave as one and t would be the number of times that we're doing transactions this could be first year second year third year right no compounding here okay so this formula reduces down to a is equal to p one minus r to the power of t right so the way this works is because we're not going to compound there's nothing you're paying in the middle we're going to assume right so how much money is left let's say we go through 10 10 iterations of this right of your original hundred dollars if you keep one minus 0 0.1 percent which is the interest that you're going to be paying per transaction let's say you do it 10 times this is once twice three times let's say you do it ten times let's see how much money is left and then what we can do is calculate how much money when do we reach zero after how many iterations and by the way this occurs on every hundred dollars someone earns right so your next hundred you get to zap fifteen dollars off the get go on the first 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 spend right as your principal decreases the interest that you're paying reduces as well so in the end this graph just looks like this it's peaks down right so this would be uh, 0 0.85 0 0.85 let's say to the power of 10 boink times 100 boink. so after 
100 after 10 times of spending of your original hundred dollars going through 10 transactions there's only going to be 19 dollars 19 dollars and 65 cents left and keep in mind the last five iterations or six iterations the there's less and less taxes being taken off because this principle is a lot less right 19.6 uh, six nine nineteen point six nine nineteen point six nine okay that's something to keep in mind gang um i just thought it was worth putting this out there because uh this is something that we're gonna have to start thinking about as interest rates uh kick up in the world um because they're they're about to be uh unfortunately right unfortunately we see we see we see we see right we see we see we see we see as my friend says spending money to finance your destruction spending money to finance your destruction indeed indeed right indeed crazy times and this is bare minimum bare minimum Okay, bare minimum um, we need to as a society do something about this uh, and those in power are working towards getting a bigger chunk of this because what's going on right now is a lot of centralized institutions are getting together and saying you know what we need to tax society more because we need uh, better carbon footprint we need to become environmentally better we need to prepare for whatever else is coming down the pipe we need to collaborate and a lot of the politicians bureaucrats that are in power that are imposing imposing this stuff these taxes this theft this theft um, a lot of those people have not been elected they have been appointed and a lot of those people are, are not the best of us but the they are the worst of us okay uh, because a lot of it comes through centralization of power and the one thing we have learned throughout history uh human history is centralization of power leads to complete corruption right as the saying goes absolute power corrupts absolutely right and when centralized institutions are given absolute power over our capital our productivity then that absolute power has been corrupted absolutely i thought this was important to put out there uh just so we can relate the mathematics into everything else that we've been doing right and we will talk about a lot more about this stuff in the future uh, but we go baby steps